a bit. So, hi, I'm Jonathan Fielding. Uh, as I said, I work at uh, RVU, uh, where I'm a lead engineer, uh, and I work in the financial, financial services team. So we're building out um, uh, websites that sell financial services products, um, like credit cards and loans. Um, so um, one of the things we care about RVU is, is web performance. Um, the reason. The reason for that is because obviously web performance has a, a direct correlation to having a great user experience on your website and also has kind of correlated to financial implications of the business as well. Um, SEO is important to us and, and Google assess web performance as part of web performance. So many talked about performance um, and I've seen a lot uh, focus on how you can improve the speed of your website. Uh, so they jump straight to the sets to make it faster, whether that's fitting, fixing your critical rendering path, try to work out how to, to um, improve the time to interactive. Um, uh, rather than teaching us how to gather our own data on our own users. So today um, I'm going to shift that around and we'll spend time focusing primarily on data. So that rather than trying to solve general perform performance problems, you have the data available so you can solve your users' problems specifically. And it also means you have a business case to do so because you can say to your, um, your C C CEO, look, we've got this, this problem. If we fix it, it could have this impact on our business. So to start with, I want to talk about the different kinds of data. So we are focused on two kinds of data. Uh, the first of this, which is synthetic data. So synthetic data, as the name suggests, is data captured in a lab-like setting. So for web performance, um, your lab might be the, the cloud, so you might, you might run it in AWS, or it could be just your local computer um, if you um, are, are running Lighthouse locally. The second type of data we were looking at collecting is real user metrics. Uh, real user metrics captured in a user's browser and reported back. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, and, usually, and usually this is with um, like a JavaScript library that will capture the metrics that will work out how long to load and send them back to your server so that you can log them. For both the uh, kinds of uh, web data, there are five key metrics. Um, well, there are many metrics, but five key ones uh, that are known as web vitals, which we should be looking at. So the first of which is uh, time to first byte. The time, this is how it takes this browser to receive the, the first byte of content from when, it's been, when the user has requested it from the browser. Uh, you have first input delay. This is the time from which a user first interacted with page to time when the browser first responds. Uh, we have first contentful paint. Uh, this, this is the time it takes the first point a user can see something on their screen. Um, so imagine that time where you're just staring at a white page on your phone. It can be really annoying. So it's a huge impact on user experience. Uh, largest contentful paint. So this is when your page make main content is loaded. So actually when the user can start reading that content and cumulative layout shift. Um, so this is a measure of how layout shifts unexpectedly. So if you think about like when you're, you're viewing a news article and um, suddenly the content jumps because it's loading an image, uh, this is a measure of, of that sort of jump that can, that can cause a jarring user experience. So let's collect some synthetic data. Uh, so to, to collect synthetic data, we need an environment that gives us repeatable results. Usually this is either on a server or on a local machine, but it has to be a controlled environment where it, uh, it, it can be a consistent, um, a consistent environment. So what I'm, what I'm going to be using is a, is a uh, Docker container called Browseless. Um, the uh, benefit of using this Docker container is it has a headless version of Chrome that provides an API, which is really cool. Um, we'll be using uh, Lighthouse, which comes with, with the Browseless Docker container uh, with version six, and this this latest, with latest version, so we can um, get all the web vital statistics. What's happening there? So uh, this is this is uh, the code. So to make a request, so I'm going to use Node fetch. So I can use fetch API. Uh, I, I'm going to make request this stat endpoint, uh, sending it to the the uh, my domain name as, as body, and I'm just going to console log the results. So if I run this code. What's going to happen? It's going to, it's going to run a lighthouse test against my blog. Luckily, it's quite performance. So it's not going to take too long, and then uh, it's going to output the results. It shouldn't take too long now. And as you'll see, the lighthouse response is huge. So if we if if we go up here, you can see uh, it gives a bit of inf environment information. 
Uh, it tells us the lighthouse version was 2.6.4.1. Um, and, and, and then it, it gives, gives us a whole set of audits. So you, so you can see like first contentful paint, uh, large contentful paint, et cetera. So having got our lighthouse test results, we can now start to pull out those five metrics we talked about earlier. So I, what I've done, I don't know, um, is I've um, updated this um, code to um, pull out the first contentful paint, the, the, the large contentful paint, the cumulative layout shift, the, the, the max potential first input delay and the server response to time, which is our time to first byte. Now if we run that again, it's going to pull that information out directly, um, which is obviously a lot easier to suggest than that massive JSON object. Now my doc container is warmed up, it should be quite okay, cool. So we've got, as you can see from my blog, my first content of paint and large content of paint at the same time because it paints, um, it doesn't do subsequent paints. Um, first input del delay, um, and my time to put first byte is quite quick. I expect that because it's hosted on GitHub. Uh, to, ha to handle variance between the tests, we should run multiple tests. So I've updated my code uh, so that we can calculate the averages of, of uh, the, the averages, and then uh, obviously it's running while I talk about it. Um, then we're running the, the, the lighthouse tests three times. Then we're just calculating the average for each of these values. And I'm just going to log out those averages. Uh, because this is a consistent environment, it's okay to use uh, averages. Um, when I when we when we use run data later, we'll be using medians. So as you can see, we've got no averages for these metrics. Um, with the data in hand, we now want to record it so we monitor performance over time. Because what we want to be seeing is trends in the performance of our website, and what we want to, be able to say, okay, so this code change on this date could have had an impact on our on our website. Um, so for this, I'm going to use BigQuery, which is a data warehouse product from Google. You could use any database, really. Um, BigQuery is just a very cheap, scalable solution. Um, so if we look, we've got the exact same code uh, as before, but instead we're actually going to generate a row. So they're running again. Uh, so we're going to generate a row, and then we insert it into BigQuery. Um, the, the BigQuery's API is quite simple. Um, we just have to um, tell it what data set we want to include it to, the table, and the rows to include. Cool. So that data is there, so that we can use it later. Ha having done our, got our synthetic data into BigQuery, uh, let's start to analyze it. So uh, it's in BigQuery. Uh, so let's get the data from our tests. So a simple uh, BigQuery uh, uses uh, SQL to uh, make requests. So um, we can do a basic query like select star from performance experiments of synthetic and then with the location us and then we can run that uh, and now get, get all, all, all the records as you can see on some dates like this 15th of may there are multiple uh, tests so um I, I, I so what we want to see is um is the trends over time a bit more rather than just the um uh, every single test because otherwise it can get quite um, noisy if you're running multiple tests a day. So what I've done here is I've updated this my code to, to get the averages of time to first byte, FCP, if there's input delay, um, LCP and CLS. Uh, if we run scroll down now, it's just to say the same making the request. And this time we've grouped the data to get the averages out of BigQuery per day. Having grouped the data, we'll, uh, we will now be able to visualize those trends. So um, you, you, you could use some uh, like a, a graphing tool. Uh, pull this data, uh, BigQuery does allow you to integrate with multiple graphic tools um, and load the data in. Um, because I have a command line here, I'm going to actually use a command line library called Irvi to generate a bar graph. Um, we're going to first going to render a graph for time to first byte. Um, so we're going to this this, this uh, little method here just uh, loops loops through the rows and pass it into the format that Irvi requires, where we have key, value, and style. So this is our graph. If we if we change this to first input delay, um, and 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 run that again, you can see we can, we can see the trends. Um, if if we can switch to first console full paint. 
I think it, you, what we can see is like, okay, so on the 12th of the 5th, there was a bit of a spike, was something went out that, that day, that potentially, it, it gives us uh, indicators of what we should be investigating. Uh, these visualizations allow us to understand the performance of our site day to day and will allow us to see where changes we've made have made improving negative effect performance. Um, however, synth however, synthetic data like this will allow us to only see trends or, or website performance, but will not tell us what our users are experiencing. So that's why we need to use real user metrics. So let's have a look at go, capturing users uh, metrics from our users uh, directly from the users' browsers. So the, um, when um, the Chrome team started talking about these web vitals, um, they actually developed a library um, called, called Web Vitals that allows you to capture these directly in the browser. Um, th this, this is an example of how you'd use it. So you could import it into um, some JavaScript and then um, a call individual methods such so as get first contentful paint. Um, and then you pass it a callback. In this case, I'm just console logging. Um, and that'll just log to the console the first console for data. data. Um, if you want to get started quickly, though, you can use something like unpackage. Um, so this is a, a very basic version of JSBin that I implemented myself, um, where basically we're able to, um, we're loading in the unpackage, we're running in web vitals. I should run. I don't know why it's not running. So that's a, 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 a uh, so let's try this. No, nope. apparently I've got a bug in Chrome. But anyway, um, what this would do is it would just log to the console um, the um, the response for, for these two APIs. Um, so once you've figured out your data to capture from your users, you need to store it somewhere that you can query this data and analyze it. So again, uh, there's many different tools you can use for this. Uh, you could pump it directly into your Google Analytics, uh, push it into the data layer for Google Tag Manager. Uh, if you're, um, it, it, if you want to just uh, have a piece of somewhere to pump the data and it be passed somewhere else, you could use something like Segment and Meta, Meta Router. Um, today, I'm going to capture the data in Segment. Um, this is partly because I'm familiar with Segment, um, and all, all, also because it allows us to directly link the data we collect on our website into something like BigQuery. So every time uh, there is a request, it'll then pump, the, pump that data directly into BigQuery, which is incredibly useful for, um, for analysis purposes, as we saw earlier. So what we need to do is update the code. So I've got, what I've done is for each of the methods here, um, I'm using the get, which is input delay, time to first byte, et cetera. Um, I've got, I'm calling a log method as the callback. Then um, just so I can test it, I've got console log with the different event values. And then I'm just using the segment analytics.track event to send the data into segment. Then if then to from a testing point of view, you can actually go directly into segment and they have a debug interface, which allows you to um, see if these events are actually going in. So, that, so this was me testing it working. So having and, um, got our real use metrics, into BigQuery, let's start analyzing it. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is analyze the data, is look at the median first console paint over the past seven days. The reason I use medians when looking at real user metrics is because it, 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 it helps you get an idea of what the users in the middle are experiencing rather than considering the outliers. Um, oh, sorry, I already said that. Just that. Um, so they're less impacted by outliers than, than median averages. So, um, if we, if we look at, uh, we've based our query here. Uh, to get the median, I'm using the approx quartiles method of um, the query's SQL language, um, saying that I want the offset of 50. Uh, I'm also going to limit uh, group by date and limit by seven results. Uh, so now we can see some data from my blog. Our blog doesn't get that much traffic these days. Um, I've moved everything to medium. Um, but if, 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 we, if we look, that it's the same as before, we should update the query. Having queried our data, we can then start to plot this data on a graph to see how the median changes over time. So again, I'm using the Irvi library I used earlier. Um, and we're going to loop through and show graphs. Uh, 
so that, as you can see, this is the, this, this is the median for uh, first contour for paint. I can do the same for uh, time to first bite. Um, what we can see, what, what, what this kind of shows me is that back in May, I had a spike in time to first bite. So it kind of gives, makes me think, okay, did we have a server? Uh, is there a server issue I need to investigate to prevent those spikes happening again? Along with the median to understand the bigger percentage of our user experiencing, we should be looking at, at the percentiles. The so percentiles are important because they allow us to understand the curve of our performance metrics. So where the 50th the, the, the percentile of the median is like the middle of what our user experiencing, if we want to consider, make sure we build the experience that 95% of our users, I guess, they're getting, they're getting 95% of the users are getting, we should be looking out to the 95th percentile. If we, um, so this approach quartiles method we used earlier um, can be used um, to get the, the 75th and 95th percentiles here. And we can just name them 75th and 95th. If the rest of the code is the same. So, but what this gives us is a bit more detailed information about this. So we can see on this date, um, while the median was eight, 888, the 75th percentiles was one second one and a half seconds and same. And because I, did, I have limited data, my 95th percentile is the same. We can then just again uh, visualize that alongside our median and compare them. So we run this. I'm uh, using the early library again. And this time we can, we can see the graphs side by side. So like you can see here, we had, this is first con contentful paint and we had a big difference. A, a, a user had a rebound experience here. Our 75th percentile. And this person, our 95th percentile, had a terrible user experience at uh, taking 119 seconds for my page to paint. Um, that's kind of embarrassing on my blog. So, this was just a small sample of things you can do with the data once you have it. Besides simply looking at the data in this way, you can start to combine it with your other, other, other analytics data. So, if you um, if you think about like conversion events, so for at your RVU, um, we have product tables that people click on. So that is our conversion is one of our conversion events. And um, if we track that in segment alongside also tracking the performance metrics, we can then see a correlation between whether the, perform the performance is affecting our conversions. So in summary, so we're collecting the data. We st we start to we can start to analyze the impacts. Of site speed has on our users. And both um, synthetic data and real user metrics can be really useful um, for different things. So your synthetic data will help you, in, you, you identify specific pieces of work that might have been made changes affected the performance of your site. And the real user metric data will help you identify problems that users are seeing that you couldn't spot in your, in your control environment. Perhaps they are using slow devices, for example. This helps us to understand whether we have a performance problem in the first place, because if you don't, great, then you should be celebrating and um, you can move on to building that next great feature. But if you do, it means you can argue to, uh, well, make the, the argument to your product owner or your CTO that you need to invest time in fixing it. And, 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 and beca because you now have this data, you can, you can identify what, where you should spend your time to, to investigate. So, do you have a problem with first console full paint, or is it was a problem with uh, uh, time to interactive, or to, or, to, or first input delay? Like, where get some data to tell you that? Thank you very much. Uh, all the lovely photos were for Unsplash from these folk, and that's me. And 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 oh. and, and don't forget, uh, RVU is hiring, as, as, as always.